Welcome to the fourth lecture on digital simulation. So far, we had seen only circuits with the independent sources and the resistances. Now, we will introduce a voltage controlled current source into the circuit and see how the modified nodal analysis equations can. So, a voltage general uh, diagram of a voltage controlled current source is found here. So, it is connected between 8th node in the circuit and 11th node. It is driving a current from the 8th node to the 11th node. The magnitude of that current is given by G times Vmm. Where G is a parameter and Vmn is a voltage somewhere in the circuit between the mth node and nth node. Vmn is found here. There will be an mth node in the circuit and nth node. Voltage between these two nodes is Vmn. This Vmn controls the magnitude of the current. So it is a voltage controlled current source. So let us illustrate the effect of uh, voltage controlled current source on the MNA equations by doing an example. So this is our example. A circuit diagram is uh, shown. So we have resistances in the diagram. Uh, the conductance values of value of this resistance is G11. The conductance value of, of the one is G12. G22 and G33 are conductance values of. Then there is an independent current source of magnitude IS1 and another independent source current source of magnitude IS2. And there is an independent voltage source of magnitude VS1. And uh, here there is an there's a dependent current source whose value is gm vx where gm is a constant and vx is a voltage in the circuit between uh, which is marked here vx is a voltage across the resistance uh, or uh, sorry conductance g12 vx is a voltage across the conductance g12 let us first uh, mark the nodes in the circuit that is the first step so this is node number one this is node number two. This is node number three. And this is our uh, reference node. So there are three nodes in the circuit. So we can write three KCL. Since there are three nodes. Then in modified nodal analysis, there will be equations corresponding to uh, independent voltage sources. There is only an there is only one independent voltage source. There will be one equation corresponding to the independent voltage source. So we have to treat the current through the independent voltage source as a variable. So we will mark this current as IVS1 directed from this plus terminal of the source to minus terminal. So there are now four variables in our variable matrix. The variable matrix, there are four variables. First three variables are node voltages V1, V2, V3. And the fourth variable is the current through the independent voltage. Yes, that is I VS. So this is our variable vector. Now we will develop the coefficient matrix A matrix by writing the KCL equations one by one each these three nodes. So let us consider node one first. Node one. So at node one current going out from node 1 through G11 is simply G11 into V1 and current flowing through G12 away from node 1 G12 multiplied by V1 minus V because G12 is connected between node 1 and node 2 so current through G12 will be conductance multiplied by potential difference V1 minus V1. that is written here then current through this branch is the current value of this source that is GMVX, it is directly given here, so it is GMVX. All these three currents are flowing out. Now there is one more branch um, connected to node 1 that is this current source, independent current source, but that current is coming in into the node. So we can uh, treat it as minus IS. So sum of all the currents going out from node 1 is equal to 0. So that gives this equation. Now here Vx 
can be replaced by V1 minus V2 because Vx is a voltage drop across G12. So yeah, G12 is connected between node 1 and uh, node 2. So Vx is simply V1 minus. So by substituting Vx uh, V1 minus V2, you can get the modified form of this equation. And uh, by some rearrangement, you will finally get this equation number 1. So the coefficient of V1 will be G11 plus G12 plus coefficient of V2 will be G12 plus V minus of G12 plus V. There is no coefficient for V3. Uh, then coefficient of I V S1 also same. Then there is a constant there minus I S1. This you can bring to the right side. The next one. Minus I S1 can be brought to the right hand side of the equation. And coming to node 2, we can write the KCL equations at node 2. Node 2 current uh, flowing through this G22 is simply V22 into G2. Then current flowing through G12 branch is V2 minus V1 into G12. So these two things. And current flowing out from node 2 through this independent source VS1 is nothing but IVS1. We have marked IVS1 in the opposite direction in the initial. So this is minus IVS1. So sum of these three currents is equal to zero. If you rearrange the terms, you can get equation number two minus G12 into V1 plus G12 plus G22 into V IVS1. Similarly, at node three we can apply Kirchhoff's current law. At node three, so this is node number three. If you write the equations, is E33 into V3, and IS2 is going out, then IPS1 going out. Then there is one more branch that is GMVX is coming in, so it is minus GMV. Sum of these currents is equal to zero, and here also you can replace VX by V1 minus V. And by rearranging the terms. Uh, we will get the equation number three. Then so we got three equations by applying Kirchhoff's current law at these three nodes. Then we have one more equation for this independent voltage source. So this independent voltage source is connected between node number two and node number three. Positive plate of source is connected to node three, negative plate is connected to node two. So V3 minus V2 is simply Vs1. We got the fourth equation. So in matrix form, we can arrange it as ax equal to z, where x I have already mentioned x is variable vector, consists of the node voltage v1, v2, v3, and the current through the independent voltage source. So I have tabulated all the four equations here. Now in matrix form, if you write this in matrix form. We'll get the final equations. So now let us check whether uh, is, is it possible to get these equations by inspection. So if you look at the circuit diagram, uh, we have already seen the final MNA equations will be of the form AX equal to Z. Then this A matrix will have sub matrices G, B, C, and D. So what is the G matrix? If there was no current source, suppose there was no independent current source, the G matrix can be uh, written like this. The diagonal entries will be, uh, what will be the size of the G matrix? Size of G matrix will be number of nodes by number of nodes. Since there are three nodes, it will be three by three matrix. This we have seen in the previous uh, three examples. And so, uh, the first diagonal element will be the sum of the conductances compared to the first you know, is G11 and G. G11 plus G12. And the second diagonal element will be the sum of the conductances connected to the you node know, that is G12 plus G22. The third diagonal element will be the sum of the elements connected to node 3. There is only one conductance connected to node 3 that is only G3. 
then in the first row second column position that is here the entry will be negative of the conductance between 190 conductance between 190 is g12 g12 minus g1 then between node 1 and node 3 there is no conductance it is between node 2 and node 1 again it is minus g12 between node 2 and node 3 in node 2 and node 3, if you observe the diagram, there is no conductance. This element is between the third row and second row. Third node and second node, there is no conductance. Of this. So, this will be the G matrix in the case of uh, a circuit without any dependent current source. But in our Okay, uh, we have got the G matrix like this. This we got by writing the Casey equation. So if you compare these two matrices, you can see that the only difference is the presence of this GM term. It appears in four locations. This GM is the parameter of that uh, dependent current source. M is the parameter of that dependent current source. It appears in four locations in the G matrix. Other than that, there is no change in the G matrix. So the stamp of this dependent current source on the G matrix is actually a two by two matrix of form G M minus G M minus G M. So this stamp, if you insert this stamp into the G, original G matrix at proper location, you will get the new G matrix. So we will generalize this. Before going to that, let us check whether there is any change in the B matrix, B, C and D matrix. Coming to the B matrix, how, how to write the B matrix, also I discussed in the previous class. The size of the B matrix will be 3 by 1 number of nodes by number of independent voltage sources. Since there are three nodes, the number of rows will be three. Since there is only one independent voltage source, number of columns will be one. So this Vs1 is connected between node 3 and node 2. Node 3 is connected to positive light, so the third row will have plus 1. Node 2 is connected to negative light, so the second row will have minus 1. So 0, minus 1, 1. This will be the zero. The B matrix, so you can see it here. So B matrix is 0, minus 1, minus 1. 0, minus 1, minus 1. C matrix is simply transpose of that. There is no change for C matrix also. Then D matrix is 0, zero matrix with size 1 by 1 because there is only one independent voltage. So the only change is in this G matrix. So let us generalize it. So only the G matrix is modified. So you can observe that the if the dependent current source is between the kth node and the lth node, then the kth row and lth row will get modified in the G matrix. And if the controlling voltage, the voltage which is controlling the current source is Vm, that is between m voltage between mth node and m the nth node in the circuit. So m the column and m the column in the G matrix will be in our example, let us go back to the number. So you can see that the G, this GM Vx, this dependent source is connected between node 1 and node 3. So K is 1 positive, the current is flowing from K to L. So K is 1 and L is 3. So it is connected between kth node and lth node. This first node and the third node. Then the voltage which is controlling this current source is the voltage Vx which is between first node and second node. So mth node and nth node are uh, this, this is mth node and this is nth node. The voltage which is controlling the source is M, Vm where m is 1 and n is 2. So if you consider the G matrix, first row and 
third row of the G matrix will be affected and first column and second column will be affected. Let us check whether it is true. In your uh, final matrix, you can see row 1 is modified and row 3 is modified because K is 1 and L is 3. Then column 1 is modified since M is 1 and column 2 is also modified since M is 2. Then the stamp of the matrix is EM minus EM minus EM and EM. So this is the stamp. So if you insert this stamp at the proper location in the original G matrix, you can include the effect of the independent. So we will see more examples in the coming videos. So this is how we can include a, an MNA matrix. We can include a dependent current source in the modified neural network.